Love is blind and so are we often when it comes or sometimes when it comes to supersizing and building our businesses. Sharon Hornell from here with Supersize Your Business and our relationship related idiom for today is love is blind. I'm going to take off my sunglasses. Although I am legally blind, I can uh, see a little bit so I'd like to not have them on because number one, they're dirty. Number two, they block the little bit of vision that I still have. So love is blind. This is one, uh, this is a very, very old idiom. Joffrey Chaucer used it in The Merchant's Tale. That's when it first appeared in writing. And William Shakespeare followed and used it in, in several of his plays, actually. Uh, but it dates back to the Greek god Cupid. Or, not Greek, the Roman god of love, Cupid. Roman, Greek. Greek, Roman. It's all, this, it's all Greek to me. So, what does this mean? It means, it's used to describe this expression, love is blind. People aren't necessarily literally blind. But it means that... We're blind to the faults and shortcomings of the people that we love, and we tend to cut them a whole lot more slack than we would other people because of the way we feel about them. Love tends to give us all rose, these aren't rose colored, but rose colored glasses, and I, like all other human beings, am as guilty of this as the next person. We see our children's strengths much more than we see their, their faults. We see our significant others strengths and the good things and that we focus on the things we love about them if we want to stay in a relationship and the things that that are kind of weird or different or annoying we, we minimize and ignore those things fortunately we have this same behavior when it comes to growing and building and supersizing our business most of us are in our businesses because we love them we started them because of some type of a passion or love or desire to create something in the world and that means that sometimes our businesses will run into bumps and, and things along the road of growing and supersizing them that we are slow to notice and deal with uh, I'm going to share a couple of examples from my personal experiences so that people don't think I'm picking on them we all do this uh, one of, the, one of the things that I've been guilty of doing is uh, minimizing new competitors, not thinking and being um, as aware of what new competitors in the market were doing and how they were serving customers as I should have been. Another common area that pops up that I am also guilty of is sometimes not paying enough attention to the changing needs, wants, and desires of my customers right and my ideal customers not all the customers that have ever done business with me in different businesses but a specific group of customers COVID was a prime example of that and although I changed and morphed and did a lot of things differently during the COVID pandemic as did millions of business owners other millions of business owners didn't change enough and in certain areas I didn't change enough and I although I gained more customers than I lost I did lose some customers because what their changing needs were I missed them. I didn't. I didn't pay attention to and do enough research to catch all of the different changing needs and wants, and then meeting those needs and wants. Um, cultural changes in the environment of our business. A lot of times we miss those. We don't see those coming, and giant businesses have fall, owners have fallen prey to this and ended up being ousted from their own companies because under their noses. They were going down the road that they thought everybody else was going down, the different pockets in the culture that was being created uh, unconsciously, not consciously, because they wouldn't have consciously created a business that ended up ousting them. And, and I haven't done this one. I'm very conscientious of the cultural changes and what's going on in my business and very aware of uh, if there's pockets of dissent or people that are behaving in ways that don't fit with the organization. That becomes a performance issue that needs to be addressed and we need to have feedback about that because as the ceo of my own businesses i want to make sure that the culture stays healthy that the environment is healthy for everybody that's a part of the organization uh, performance issues this falls under the same category a lot of times managers and leaders will forgive certain behaviors in people that they really like and are friends with it's one of the challenges of of doing business with family and friends and I've been in family businesses for years and friends and believe me family businesses can be some of the hardest to be involved in because we know everything about our family members right I grew up with my sisters when we're in businesses together we know 
how to push one another's buttons, and that's not always the healthiest environment. That's why I'm not in business with my sisters anymore. Uh, changes, in, sometimes we miss changes in regulation, changes in processes, or, or something that changes in the environment that requires us to make a process change that we haven't made. Again, the COVID pandemic and the, the related shortages of different raw materials and, and uh, increasing inflation, all of those are things that we need to adjust to in our business. And we have to do it sooner rather than later and be proactive more than reactive and uh, address those things. We can't be blind to them. We need to know what's going on in our environment. We need to know what's going on in the economy, depending on your business and how much that impacts you. And the final thing that I will say I have definitely been guilty of is we'll have bottlenecks pop up in our companies as we're growing and building them. And the sad truth is almost always the bottleneck is created by me or by the owner or by the CEO not having a big enough picture or not seeing something that needs to be addressed. But we tend to be the bottleneck to the growth through the different growth stages of our organizations. Hard to admit. But whenever I see myself getting in the way, I stop, step back, and say, okay, what do we need to do? Get me out of this equation so that the company can grow faster than I may be comfortable with it. Because I've got the experts, I've got the team, I've got the people that can make it happen. And sometimes it's just my beliefs that need to get out of the way. So curious, have you experienced as you're building your business any times where not seeing a challenge or a problem has been an issue for you. I know in every business I've grown, there, there's been a, a point at which I miss something. You know, we do our due diligence. We have processes and procedures for reviewing results and making sure that we're moving toward our goals, but sometimes we still miss things. That's just the nature of the business. Right, that's our idiom for today, our expression for today. I'll see you tomorrow with another relationship-related idiom. If there's one you'd like to know the meaning of and the origin of, just hit me up and let me know. Otherwise, share your experience with love being blind. I'm not only blind in love with my businesses, I do it in my personal relationships as well, and with my kids. So, uh, and I guess I have the excuse because I really am legally blind. Not that that's a good excuse. All right, have an awesome day. If I can help you in any way, ask. Otherwise, I will be with you tomorrow.